Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online, or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. Five G access traffic steering, switching, and splitting is based on the use of multi-access PDU connectivity services within the 5G network. So what does this actually mean? Well, here you can see that the device has simultaneous access to both a 3GPP access network and a non-3GPP access network. So we're really talking about new radio and Wi-Fi respectively here. So the device can use either access network potentially simultaneously. Now to do this, the device will be configured with basically rules that will define how these different access networks should be used. So those rules could be based on local conditions and they'll also be based on information sent to the device from the core network. That's for the uplink direction. For the downlink direction, the UPF, the user plane function, must also be configured with these rules to determine which access networks should be used for downlink traffic. In terms of the process behind utilizing AT S, you can see that the device first needs to conduct a registration on both of the different access types, so a registration on new radio and also a registration on Wi-Fi. After that, it can then go on to send a PDU session establishment request to the network, but within there it will be a flag to say that this is actually a multi-access PDU session. Once we activate that process, what needs to happen is the rules related to ATSSS must be distributed both to the device and to the UPF, and it's actually the policy control function that would be responsible for doing that. Incidentally, the PCF would send those rules to the UPF via the session management function. And once those rules are actually installed, it allows the device and the UPF to apply what is called steering functionality. And that steering functionality will tell the device or the UPF exactly which networks should be used, which access networks should be used, and how. So for example, it might be set that the Wi-Fi network is the active network, but if that's not available, the standby network, the new radio network, will be used. Alternatively, we might factor in for certain traffic types, we're going to use the network, the access network, with the smallest delay. Alternatively, it could be a simple load balancing technique between both networks. And finally, you might have a priority-based system for certain kinds of traffic, so certain traffic must use certain access types. Remember though, last thing to note, is that 4G also had similar mechanisms to this in the form of IFOM, which is IP Flow Mobility, and also MAPCON, which is Multi-APN Connectivity. Need to know more? Why not visit our store, where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training. Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.